Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Biology. What's your BSA score? The Biology Skills Assessment is the only verified skills metric endorsed by the NAIA, NJCAA, and a growing number of NCAA coaches to discover and develop the best talent for your team. This four minute, 40 shot test can be taken free today on the Biology mobile app. Elevate your game. Well, I, I just mentioned it, you know, 40 plus years, uh, 866 wins. It's just a, a crazy number to think about. In your, in your opinion, over those years, how does the standards, your pillars, or your culture drive the performance of your program? Oh, well, I, I tell you what, I think that's everything, really. And, and um, I think it is in any successful program, but I know it's, it's the backbone of any success that, that we've had. Uh, you know, gosh, uh, we just have always wanted happy players. And I think the culture, you know, we're, we're going to get our guys, you know, the coaches that uh, like the Minnesota football coach, row the boat, you know, get guys that are in your boat and, and they're going to row and they're not bitching or complaining or whining. You know, they're, they're happy to be part of what you're doing, I think, is the most important thing that, that you can establish to try to be a successful program. Uh, we've never had a very good team, I felt like, that didn't have you know, a great bench, a great mm -hmm. um, investment by everybody, managers, filmers, teammates, you know, guys that weren't playing as much as they wanted to. And uh, when everybody's all in like that, man, you, you know, you can accomplish so much. So I really believe that that's, uh, you know, for what we try to do, that's the most important thing. And, and you know, we always have sold guys on, um, you know, we just want you to be happy. Everybody needs to be happy. So if you're not happy sitting in the bench, you know, sitting on the bench, well, you need to do something else. And mm. uh, uh, we we always say to our guys, there's there's better players walking the halls, and we really believe that. But they're in this, you know, they're for whatever reason guys that couldn't buy in or be invested in what we wanted to do. So, you know, I, I think that that's probably the most important thing that we've ever done around here to be successful. You know, I. I played for the legendary Tommy Thomas, and I, I felt that way uh, about kind of the culture that that he created. There, uh, there were times where I thought, man, there are a couple guys in our school at the colony that they they could be taking some time from me, but they didn't seem to be um, all in, like you said, in Coach T's vision or where the program was going. How hard of a decision was that over the years to? let some of those guys go that you know might have actually helped you on the floor possibly win some games? Well, uh, first of all, Coach T and I go way back. So we're very similar. <laughs> We've been friends for decades, and uh, I miss him. I haven't seen him in a while. Nobody yeah. liked that guy. But He's uh, yep. Nobody liked him. <laughs> he, yeah. I've never been around him where I just didn't die laughing, okay? And no matter when it was, you were going to laugh. That's right. I love it. Yeah. But um, that, that's difficult. You know, that, that's hard for any coach. But, uh, you know, when they're good good players or they might be really good athletes. But, you know, you're asking everybody to come to open gym and they never show. You're asking guys to stay a little longer in the weight room and then the first guy out the door or to stick around and, hey, everybody's going to shoot, you know, and they're the, they're the first guy out the door. I, I've just never coached those guys very well. Mm. And, um, I'm always upset and, and uh, you know, we got other guys that are working as hard as they possibly can. They're, they're staying late. They're doing everything you ask. Uh, that, that's who I want. And it's difficult when, you know, they might jump higher or actually be better basketball players than the guys you have. But at the end of the day, I just think you'll accomplish more and it's a 10 times more fun when you have guys that are, you know, all in. I think that's a huge nugget that you said coaching guys that you enjoy you know having around that seem to share the same values because I think so many times you you maybe hear stories about um, coaches compromising 
or changing things for more talented players. But I wonder how much that really just eats at the coach a little bit, you know, that, that, that their standards, they're lowering their standards to enable a more talented player. But over the years, you've been able to kind of stand firm, uh, you know, through that. Well, you know, like I said uh, previously, it's, it's not easy. And, you know, we all sit there and say, good gosh, this guy could really help us, you know. And, uh, but, but once again, you know, this, you know, being part of a basketball team, coaching it or playing on it, it ought to be an enjoyable, fun experience. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think one of the biggest compliments that I've ever been paid in, in our coaches, our program, is, uh, you know, when kids say, man, we have fun. And because we work extremely hard. I'm a long hour practice guy. I always read about guys working out 90 minutes. I'm thinking, my gosh, I must not be very good at it because <laughs> I can't get anything done in 90 minutes. So we work out really, you know, long hours. And, and you know, for guys to say, man, it's fun. We have fun. Everybody, you know, has a good time. I think, you know, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. I know the last, I mean, I, I, I've only been doing this 15 years, Coach. So I'm, I'm nowhere as near uh, uh, where, where you are. And, but I, I feel like there has been a shift to, uh, and I don't know, in the last five, 10 years, maybe 15 or 20, that a, a little bit more about player enjoyment, like them actually make the awareness of coaches, of uh, are our players enjoying being at practice, being a part of the program? Do they feel valued here? At what point have you always been that way? Or was there a shift or a time maybe early on where you thought, well, this isn't working and I need to try something different? Well, I certainly did that. You know, uh, the the college coach that I played for, you know, uh, played for Mr. Iba at, at Oklahoma State and wow. Joe Stockton at Midwestern. And, um, you know, so there, even though we didn't play uh, super slow in college, there was a lot of that slower background. So, you know, I started off as a slow down type guy. All of my former players that are still around that had to play with that. Uh, <laughs> they come back and say, well, dude, what are we doing? <laughs> we're running up down the floor launching threes and we had to pass it three or four times, you know. And so, yeah. you know, I, I made a big uh, uh, philosophy change early on. And and uh, I, it, that fun and, and enjoying things had a lot to do with it. The three point line came in in the late 80s, I believe it was 87, 88, right in there. Uh, we always had a lot of guys that there weren't a di lot of difference in ability in, you know, being an Air Force-related uh, school, the Air Force mm -hmm. base related school like we are, a lot of in and out, a lot of guys, you know, that, that like basketball and could play. And, and uh, it, you know, it, it, it's more fun, I don't care who you are, to uh, play <laughs> an 85-80 game than it is a 40-35 game. And, uh, you know, so we just, we, we kind of switched and, and uh, you know, uh, numbers increased dramatically um, through the years, you know, for a smaller school, a lot of years we would run four and five teams and, uh, you know, e each year. And, and I think a lot of that had to, to do with it just, you know, while we didn't sacrifice, you know, the hard work, we, we made it fun and enjoyable and, and that was a change that I'm really glad I made. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.